Welcome to another edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Rick and Bubba here. Uh, this is a unique podcast uh, that uh, we put out every week. Uh, now, those of you that may only know us from this, uh, we do a show uh, Monday through Friday, uh, and we have podcast archives of the entire show. Uh, if you ever want to find that, uh, just search Rick and Bubba wherever you get podcasts. Uh, you see that Rick and Bubba University comes up, but you also see another podcast option, and those are the daily podcast uh, archives of our live show. So if you'd like to have more Rick and Bubba, we also have a YouTube channel that you can find by going to rickandbubba.com. Uh, but, Bubba, we are now going into the world of NIL. Name, image, and likeness. And, Rick, we're happy today to welcome to Rick and Bubba University one of our very first NIL signees, and that is – uh, Trent, <laughs> Trent, 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 last night, Trent, Trent Howard. Howard. Yeah, there you go. Oh, hey, Trent, welcome back, buddy. Oh, it's good to be here. Thank y'all for having me on. Now, Trent, you know, Trent, I would, I would have known that if Rick hadn't took away my 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 peanut butter balls right before we. That's did what this, happened. So yeah. I shook oh, up. By it. I can't be taking away no peanut butter balls. No. So, Trent, <laughs> you are a uh, rising uh, offensive lineman at Clemson uh, with Dabo Sweeney and the gang. Uh, your connection to the Rick and Bubba show goes way back uh, because you and uh, one of my sons, you guys were uh, were good friends. And uh, and then, of course, uh, we know your dad, uh, Johnny Howard. Uh, Bubba and I both uh, know him real well. So we, we've, uh, we've spent some time together, but uh, I remember when you were just a little bitty fella, you know, coming to the farm to do some deer hunting and, and uh, you and, and Brody hanging out. And so, but, uh, and went to the same high school, but, uh, you and he were in the same grade for a while. Uh, then you stayed back a year because you, you and Brody both were very young, uh, for your, uh, your class. Uh, so that's when you guys got into a different graduating class, but got to watch you, uh, as an offensive lineman, uh, at Briarwood, uh, Christian school, uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and, uh, so, so kind of talk to us a little bit first about the fact that, uh, did, did you develop a love of football, you know, uh, right out of the gate? Your dad, of course, played at the University of Alabama. Um, how, uh, how? Right out of the gate, I don't know. I really started when I was really young, and I played one year, um, and, and I hated it. And my dad had said, you know, you're too young. You don't need to be playing this year or whatever. But I just wanted to play, you know, because that was – football has always been a big thing, you know, especially where we're from and, you know, Birmingham and all. And so I hated it that year. And then, so I took, I took a year off after that. And then I ended up transferring to Briarwood. And that's really when I started was uh, in seventh and eighth grade. And that's really when I developed the passion and love that I have for it today. That's really when all that started. Well, we're very proud of you. Like I said, uh, you, you, you Brody, and I think, you know, my kids too, that went to Briarwood and uh, they said to tell you hello when we spoke and uh, congratulate you on your big NIL deal that you made. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, so tell us a little bit about uh, playing high school and, and your desire to play college and your recruitment. How did all that go? Well, play, playing in college definitely started back when I was in seventh and eighth grade because, um, and, you know, I think Rick mentioned this earlier, but I was really, really young um, for my grade and I really developed late. Um, of course, seventh and eighth grade, I was honestly one of the smallest guys on the team. So we kind of made a family decision, prayed about it for a while. And that's when I ended up deciding to stay back a year mm-hmm. and repeat the eighth grade. Um, and, you know, God works in mysterious ways. But that year is when I really hit my growth spurt and all and going into my ninth grade year. And I just figured out that I was actually I, I was actually pretty good at it. And I obviously worked really hard at it. And just over the course of time, I got bigger, stronger. I learned more. And then at the end of my sophomore year was really when my recruiting stuff kind of started. And then at the end of my junior year was when it really, really took off. So like, who did you hear from first and what's it like to get that first call from a university saying, Hey, we may be interested. So my first call was actually from UAB and uh, it was at the end of my sophomore year and they wanted me to come down and tour the facilities and hang out with them. And I went down there that day and toured everything, and then they ended up offering me a scholarship uh, that day. And I really, after that, for a whole nother year, I did not get any more offers after that. It was really just I would go back and forth with some people, um, other coaches and all, but really at the end of my junior year, once my tape had hit and everything, that's really when it took off uh, for me. So I, just kind of jumping in, and be sure that we have this right, 
Um, you made a decision early. Uh, when I say early, I, I guess that was your junior year maybe, that you made the decision that you thought at that time Georgia Tech was going to be your best option. And do, we do have that right, if I, if I remember. Yeah, yes, sir, you do. So my goal along the whole time, and which I don't know how many people know this, but the recruiting process is honestly a really, really stressful time. Yeah. Um, and I really didn't – I didn't think it would be fair to my seniors uh, that I was with. So I really wanted to have that done before I started my senior year. Um, so I actually in the spring game, I ended up like rolling my ankle pretty bad. And a big way you get recruited is going to camps in the summer. Yep. And I had already had it lined up to go to Mississippi State and other couple of bigger schools as uh, camps. Um, I guess that would be, yeah, the end of my junior year. And so once I rolled my ankle um, – I really, I couldn't do the camps and, you know, you see people see on Twitter all the time about, you know, this guy's been offered. Well, offers don't really last that long, you know, cause they're only going <laughs> to sign X number of people. So right. you got to let them know something if, if you really want to go there. And at the time um, I felt that Georgia tech was my best option. Um, and I ended up just deciding to go there. Uh, that would be, that would have been June of going into my senior year. So June of 2019. So you must be pretty smart too, Trent. You must make pretty good grades, huh? Uh, yes, yes, sir. I like to think so. I've, uh, I've done pretty well up here so far, um, but we start in-person classes for the first time uh, this fall. So we'll see how that transition goes. So, so Georgia Tech, let's stay on the timeline. So Georgia Tech was a choice, and it sounds like you're telling me, don't let me put words in your mouth, that you kind of felt like you just wanted to get it done. That was the best option on the table at the time because you didn't get to go to any of the camps. And and you're right. I, I think sometimes people don't understand. There's a lot of people that kick the tires uh, on you, uh, and they might even make you an offer. But if they don't feel like that you're enthusiastic about it, they've only got so many yeah. kids they can sign, and, and they, they don't want to waste time on you if they think they're wasting their time. And uh, But – so you do you felt like you wanted to get that off the table so you go in your to your senior year and, and not be worrying about that anymore? Yes, sir. I thought that would have been the best decision for me. And I still wanted to stay as committed as possible to my high school team. You know, and I wanted uh, and that was when we were going through a new head coaching change at the high school. And I so I really wanted that to be on the front of what I was thinking. So I really wanted the college decision behind me. And I really just felt like Georgia Tech offered a great education. Um, for me down the road. And I feel like in the next few years, they're actually going to be a very good contender in the ACC. And I still feel that way, even even being here at Clemson now. Um, but at the time, that was what I believe to be the best decision for me. So tell us a little bit, how did you go from Georgia Tech yeah. to Clemson? How did that happen? So it's, it's actually probably my favorite story. Um, so I'd always kind of been recruited by Clemson. They would send me mail all the time or whatever, because I've been coming up here to camp for, you know, six, seven years. Um, so, you know, growing up an Alabama fan, you know, you would say my dream would have been to go to, you know, play at Alabama. And, and that was true to a point. But after coming to Clemson for so many years, I really felt like it was home. Um, and, of course, my dad has a prior relationship with Coach Sweeney because um, they played together um, at Alabama. And so they were only going to sign five offensive linemen that year. Um, and they had already had their five guys committed, but they had said, you know, we're, you know, we're still going to recruit you because things change. And they, they did. So, and really God just opened doors sometimes. And so two weeks before signing day, they had a, um, an offensive lineman come in and tell Coach Sweeney that he's not coming back for his senior year. So that opened up a scholarship spot for an offensive lineman. And two weeks before um, I was supposed to sign with Georgia Tech, Coach Sweeney called and wanted to know if I wanted to come up there and play. And it was, it was really exciting. So, so Georgia Tech – how about not, that call back yeah, to Georgia not, Tech? Not, not as exciting for Georgia Tech. <laughs> but, no, but, but, no, but, sir, I, I knew the right thing to do was to call um, yeah. call Georgia Tech and let them know before I even put anything out there. Um, obviously, they were, they were, pretty, they were pretty upset. Um, but I think at the end of the day, they understood, um, you know, and, and it was, honestly didn't matter to me because that was my dream. And I really felt like God had just opened that door for me, and that's what he was wanting me to do. So that's where I landed. Well, part of this is is you know going from being a boy to a man, so and and we both know your dad uh, pretty well. But you know it, you made a decision, a hard decision, but you also got to man up and do the right thing, and and you know call somebody directly and say, "Here's what I'm about to do." 
even though that was the difficult thing to do, it, it, it's one of those things that will strain you for what life's going to be like. Yes, sir. And especially in the coaching world, um, you know, things change and I could blink and one of those guys could be on our staff at Clemson. Yeah. Um, and it's really just anytime you make a big decision like that and and it really wasn't anything Georgia Tech did. It was just another opportunity that I, you know, right. that I liked better. I just felt like it was definitely the right thing to let them know first before I did anything else on Twitter or even told Clemson that that's was what I was officially going to do. Um, so I really felt like that was the best thing to do, and I still think that to this day. Was your dad pretty excited with that? Because I, as well as we know Johnny, I know he would support you wherever you were, but I just don't really see him in a Georgia Tech hat. I, he, I think he was excited because um, they were going to pay for my school, number one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So he wasn't going to have to worry about that. Yeah. Uh, but number two, I, I think he really just wanted to support me, whatever I wanted to do. Um and then, I mean, I remember sitting on the living room couch with my dad and mom. We were just kind of shaking, you know, after I'd just gotten off the phone with Coach Sweeney because, I mean, I, they – so Georgia Tech had actually come two days before that to my house to do their in-home visit. Um, and so it was really – it was really nerve-wracking. Um, but I was actually their first one because, you know, the recruiting periods, they have periods. And when they opened up, they, they came to me and flew into Birmingham first and came and saw me. And then two days later, you know, Coach Sweeney's on the phone. So it was it was a stressful time, but I, I'm, I'm glad it worked out like it did. All right, we come back. We'll talk more with Trent Howard on the transition of, of, of the level of play from, from high school into uh, the, the level of play you find at, at Clemson. Uh, we'll talk about that, and then we'll work our way to this new opportunity for college players with the NIL agreements uh, and, and how that's going to impact uh, the landscape of big-time college football when we come back on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. All right, so Bubba, we've been on, on the big show during the week. Man, are we getting calls about these Raycon earbuds. I mean, people just – I mean, they've fallen in love with them. Got, I get an email all the time. People are blown away how good they work, how compact, how the quality of them. And then, you, you know, they compare with the very top yeah. of the line, but the price is dramatically less. Yeah, about half of the other premium brands. Like you said, we, we think they're cooler, they're hipper, they sound fantastic. It goes, you know, you don't need to go get a Raycon earbud because we're – just because you're saving money, you want to go get it because you can have the same quality for less money. Right. Because you don't, like there's I, your win. Yeah, there's your win. Yeah. You're getting the best of all worlds. Uh, they have a range of cool colors. They have customizable gel tips, which make it, make them so much more comfortable. You know, some earbuds are just not comfortable. Uh, but these are fantastic. And, boy, the durability, which we really had not talked about that much until – our audience started sending us all these emails saying, hey, I left mine out on the sidewalk. Yeah. I didn't know I dropped them. Dropped I picked, them here, lost them there, them, dro- uh, run them through the wash. Yeah, so get yours now because we're going to save you an additional 15% off the already you know price about half of the other premium brands. Go to buyraycon.com slash rickbubbapod. That's buyraycon.com slash rickbubbapod. Get another 15% off. Uh, and, look, we'd love to hear from you as well on how much you love uh, your Raycon earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash Rick Bubba Pod. Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Uh, Trent Howard is our guest, offensive lineman, Clemson University. The NIL world is is wide open. We're going to get into that. We have reached an agreement with Trent Howard uh, to be a Rick and Bubba NIL athlete. He's wearing uh, one of his three T-shirts uh, <laughs> right now. Um, and, uh, but I do want to ask you this before we get into that, you, you, you played, uh, you know, in a, in a competitive world, you know, some, uh, high school football varies wildly. Uh, you know, you can get into a game and you can be going against, uh, for you, an offensive lineman, a defense of 11 people, and there may be four outstanding players, uh, then maybe, you know, another four, uh, s- pretty good players and then three players that you're superior to. Uh, that doesn't happen in college. Uh, it, it, you you don't face anybody uh, that uh, that is a lunch break. So, <laughs> what what was the it like for you to take that step to the next level? The the biggest transition for sure for sure as far as football is the speed of the game. I mean, in high school, you know, I could get three steps in the ground before I'd even made contact. And now, since I because I played tackle in high school, and and now I'm playing center here at Clemson. I mean. I won't even have the ball off my hand and I'm getting hit. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's that fast. And that that's definitely been the biggest transition. And as far as like in high school, defenses just pretty much play, you know, four, three, and that's what they're going to stick to in college. They shift around like crazy and they're stunting, you know, they're stemming. And that's definitely the biggest, the biggest change is the speed of the game. Did, how'd they feel about your size when you arrived? I mean, there's, I'm big for high school. Then there's what, what the minimum I need to be to be down in the trenches in college. Um, yeah, what size are you, Trent? I, I'm about 6'4", um, 290 right now. But when I came in, I was about 6'4", 270. Um, so they they put some weight on me since I've been here. And I still plan to get a little bit more. Um, but that's for sure. I mean, I'm one of the smaller linemen that, uh, that we have here. Um, I've always felt that my strong suit wasn't necessarily my size, but it was what I could bring to the table mentally. Um, I think that's why they shifted me to center. I've always had really good technique as far as how I play. So, and, and that stuff has to be flawless at this level if, if you want any chance to, you know, get out there and compete a little bit. So you, where are you right now on this journey as far as the depth chart? So this will be – And what class are you in, yeah, Tetra? Yeah, yeah, you, you would so be – I'm a, I'm a red shirt freshman. So last year I red shirted. Um, I got to play my four games last year. And so this year – um, we, of course, we haven't even had camp yet, so it's really hard to even say, but I, I think I'm looking at potentially a backup guard or, um, or center this year. Well, well tell to me about your, your freshman year. I mean, um, he, he, here we go through a pandemic. Uh, <laughs> yes, so, it was wild. So, yeah. So you, you get to, to Clemson, you're all fired up. You, you got your orange and purple, you're ready to go. And then all of a sudden here comes the pandemic. What was it like to be even the red shirt year? Because you're still part of the team. You're still having yes, to go sir. through all the stuff that's going on. And as you said, you did get to participate in some of the non-conference games. I would assume it was non-conference games. There, actually, three of them were conference games. Oh, that's right. Because so everybody did yeah, different this time. Everybody played the same conference last year. Yeah, I, I got you. Got, they changed that, right? Because even as a freshman, you can play in four, even conference games, as long as you don't Definitely. exceed that, right? And still get redshirted. And you get that year back now, right? That's right. So if I if I wanted it, um, I could have six years of eligibility here. So so how how did how did the pandemic? What was that like? Um, well, the first week of workouts here, I remember you know because you can prepare yourself only so much before you come into a college weight program. And I remember being in there conditioning the first week, and we had our mask, and it was hard enough to breathe without the mask just because we were out there you know lifting, running, and all, and having our masks. You know, we had to get tested three times a week you know, the entire season, it was just, I mean, it was a, it was an experience. That, that's really all I can say to it. And I hope we don't have to go through that again this year. Um, but I mean, just from the stands not being packed from the facility, like anytime you're walking around, you got to have masks on and, and all these mandates and stuff. I'm just really hoping we don't have to do that again this year, but it was definitely an experience. <laughs> did, did it feel silly? I mean, I know, I know you had, they were trying to do what they want to do, but that you're playing a game that includes us, especially in the interior line, being right on top yeah. of each other, piling in on each with other, with face masks and and spit flying and sweat flying, and th- did it feel like lunacy? It, go to the it, sideline it, and it, put it a did, mask on. <laughs> it, it did to me personally, um, but you know, I'm here. I'm going to do what they tell sure, me to do. Sure. You know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, for sure, because we go out there and practice, and then, of course, you're just in helmets. You know, there's no mask. You, you can't practice football a, in a mask no. and, and with your helmet. I mean, you can't – you guys know how that is. I mean, you just can't do it. Um, but it was definitely it was definitely weird, and I just hope it's all done. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I, there's no other way to say it. I just, is I just there really any indication it. that they let you know that that decision still hasn't been made? Well, so now for the ACC, we have to have 85% of the team vaccinated, team and staff combined in order to, to like, the mandates go away. And um, there's just a lot of guys on the team that haven't gotten their vaccine. And, you know, who am I to tell them not to? Because I, I definitely see both sides. Um, I actually just went ahead and got mine in May because, you know, I don't want to hear it. I just – whatever, <laughs> you know, I'll just be done with it. Um so we have to get 85% vaccinated. And if you're not vaccinated, you still have to go up there and test weekly. Um, so it's kind of like what we saw the one of the doctors indicate this week. They're going to make it so miserable for people who have not been vaccinated. They finally say, hey, why not? And, and, and Trent, we're not anti-vaxxers by any stretch. We're just, we're just for being smart vaxxers, you know, yeah. and, and asking questions because in all fairness, this is all a new deal. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the main thing is, is definitely the 85%. They're really pushing us to get to that. Um, because so now if, since I'm vaccinated, if my roommate was to test positive, I don't have to quarantine. Right. Um, so that means if we were like on the road, which makes um, sense, you know, that actually right, makes yes, sense. So, so if we were on the road and I tested positive or he tested positive, now neither one of us has to quarantine and miss a game. Um, so, but if you're not vaccinated, then you would have to do the quarantine for two weeks. So, and I know it's different in every state, and I'm sure it's different at every university, and every conference has their own rules. So, at Clemson, can can Dabo Sweeney he he can't make you get vaccinated, can he, or can he? No, sir. He you can't make um you can't make them uh, get vaccinated. You can only just give them the information that they need. And you know, our team goal is obviously to win the national championship this year, and we know we didn't have the vaccine last year. Right. You know, this right. year we have the vaccine. So um, I, they're really pushing us to kind of go ahead and get it, you know, um, so we don't have to deal with this stuff down the road and hopefully not in the playoffs or anything like that. Yeah, you don't want that to hit you later in the season. What? Which one did you get, Trent? Did you have any problems with it? I got the J&J one, and I had actually had COVID in, um, in February, and it was kind of a whole ordeal, but uh, – so I just went ahead and got the J and J. I didn't have any problems with it. Um, I've been good to go. So yeah, because some people, if they've already had it and, and they still have antibodies and get the vaccine, they have an issue. They have a tough time with it. Yeah. But did you have a tough time with COVID yourself? Um, well, so actually, I did. Um, I got COVID and it developed into strep throat and mono. Oh boy! Um, and it put me in the hospital for three days. Actually, I missed I missed a lot of spring practice because of it. Um, so, like I said earlier, I so was two ninety, and I dropped down to two fifty. Oh boy, two fifty. Um, so I bet you, I bet you was anxious to get the vaccine then at that point. So I was just, I was done with it. You know, I was just ready to, you know, get it over with. And it's, it's taken me a while to get back up to two ninety, but I'm, I'm glad I'm here, and it's. Hopefully that won't happen to me again. Trent, so. let me tell you, anytime you need to gain weight, you come hang out with me about a week. Yeah. I can put it on <laughs> yes, you, buddy. Yes, sir, I will. That Mashed way. potatoes, ice cream, yeah, we and can do peanut it. butter balls will do it. Hey, well, they, they feed us pretty good up here now, too, so <laughs> it might be a tough call. Well, let, let me tell you this, though, Trent, on on that note. Now, I'm sure things change, and uh, when when my son played, it's been a while ago, but it hadn't been a long, t- you know, so long that things would change, but – I remember when they were putting weight on him, he had the same situation. He was a center, and, and they wanted to put the weight on him. They they seemed to just put it on with really anything that was high calorie. Uh, at, at, is there what do, they, what do they encourage you to do to put weight on? So, actually, each player has their own app, and so a lot of guys need to lose weight. You know, for me, it's the gain weight, and then we have a, you know, we have a buffet for lunch dinner and all that and then usually the nutritionists that we um have on staff are kind of standing there saying hey Trent you know you need some more of this or you know somebody else you don't need any of that and we kind of just try and stick to that and then really where the weight gaining comes in is the lifting weights yeah um, moving the weights around and then they they make us our own protein shakes after each workout um that are custom to you and what you need you have your own vitamins and everything um yeah, that's so it's really if you come here and put the work in and do what they're asking, you'll be able to accomplish what where they want you for sure. Trent, when you're at the buffet, what do they tell you you need more of that of? Uh, usually everything uh, because I'm definitely <laughs> on the lower end as far as weight goes. So I, I, I usually don't have a tough time. I can pretty much get whatever I want. And, have another uh, round, even, Trent. Even if it's high calories because I'm just going to burn them all off the next day in workouts, you yeah, know. Right. Um, yeah, let me give so, you a heads up. When you quit playing football, if you keep eating like that, you're yeah. really balloon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sir, I've witnessed that firsthand. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, just ask your, ask your dad about that one. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. But, but, but on that note, so did you feel like when you got and, – and this is just – I'm just trying to think about how things have changed so much. But – and I remember uh, uh, Blake saying that the nutritionist and the trainer said, do not receive supplements or anything, any protein. Don't get anything from anybody else other than us. Don't, Absolutely. Don't, don't go buy it. Don't we? You, if it doesn't come off this training table over here, you can't have it. That's that's right. There's so many um, you know regulations and rules around that stuff, um, and rightfully so, to be honest. But you know, you can go out to like a GNC or somewhere and buy a little protein shake, and you don't even know what's in it. But it says you know it's got the right grams and everything, and then all of a sudden it's got a banned substance in it, yeah. and NCA comes in the next day. And, you know, you fail the test and you're just like, what happened? And so that's why they really say, 
anything you eat as far as nutrition wise, it needs to come from our nutrition bar here. Did you feel like you were ready for college uh, or, or was the demands of workout and conditioning uh, a, a, a lot different than what you were required to do in high school? It's definitely a lot different. Like I said yeah. earlier, you can only prepare yourself so much yeah. um, for it. And, and really because COVID hit before I left. And so all the gyms kind of closed down and everything. And so it was really a struggle. We actually went up to the school and, and got a rack and put it in my basement um, for a couple months. But there's really no preparing yourself. I mean, there is, but you can't you can't match the kind of intensity and all that that you have in a college football program any, anywhere else as far as in high school. So we'll come back, and when we do, we jump into NIL. Yep. We, yep. Jump, we jump into the NIL. We, of course, have reached a deal with Trent. Uh, he's seeing what's happening uh, in the landscape of all this firsthand right there on the front row. And we'll jump into uh, the NIL ruling and how it's affecting college football when Rick and Bubba University, the podcast, continues. All right, so uh, a lot of major corporations out there, Bubba, we talked about this uh, again on the big show, uh, even hearing James Carville saying, guys, we've got to come off this wokeness thing. Yep, uh, wokeness is killing we're, us. We're playing to a small, loud group of people. Uh, you know, we're, we're becoming so woke that we're canceling people's free speech. Uh, and a lot of times you feel helpless. You're like, I, don't, I, I'm try- I need products and I need things. I'd rather not, uh, you know, partner with companies uh, that I don't think are worthy of my money because of what they're going to do with it and what they support and the things they do and well, the things they keep putting on their, you know, on their websites and all that. Well, if it, it, when we get down to your, your mobile uh, contract, how about Patriot Mobile is America's only Christian conservative wireless company and donates a portion of every dollar to organizations that fight for causes that you and I care about, Bubba, the things that you and I would go, hey, yeah, we're for that. Right now, they, they have two great offers to choose from. You, you pick which one you think would be better for you. You can either do this, 50% off the first two months, that's good, or $100 off any phone, whichever one of those you'd rather do. Uh, both come with free Premier Activation, that's key. Uh, so you just simply go to patriotmobile.com slash Rick Bubba for details. I know what you're saying. What about coverage? You know, again, I thought Rick and Bubba, I thought you said we shouldn't have to substitute quality. You're right. You don't have to. Uh, Patriot Mobile has the broadest nationwide coverage and uses the same towers as the major providers, and you get great service for less money. So go to patriotmobile.com slash rickbubba to get either one of these offers, uh, or you can call their top-rated U.S.-based team at 972-PATRIOT. So that's patriotmobile.com slash rickbubba, patriotmobile.com slash rickbubba, or 972-PATRIOT. All right, so we're talking to Trent Howard. Trent, you uh, uh, agreed to enter into an NIL deal with the Rick and Bubba Show. Uh, you are uh, a rising redshirt freshman, backup center at Clemson going into the summer workouts. Uh, you, you Have you received your merchandise? I guess seeing the shirt you have on, it, it has arrived. I have, in fact, I have not gotten to put the spatula to use yet, but I'm wearing the <laughs> shirt and I have the hat, so we are a go on the merchandise. And tell the audience what you picked. You picked the what, what shirt and what hat. So I, I can't remember the name of the shirt, but it's the Common Sense is a Superpower. I think that's it. And yeah. then I picked the mesh hat. I really like the mesh hat. It, it was actually good looking when I when I got it. Um, and then I, I had to have the spatula. I couldn't let Kennedy get that one up on me. <laughs> um, so I had to get the spatula. So, Trent, carry us, carry us through the process. You, you get an offer. What do you have to do as a as a player? And by the way, congratulations being our first football player, our mm-hmm. first ACC athlete, and our first Clemson athlete. What, what do you have to do to get clearance? Uh, who, who do you carry it to? Who do you talk to? How does that process work? So before all this stuff kind of came out, we had multiple meetings about it. Um, and so they kind of, they finally like, we have an app on our phone and it's called Compass. So the contract that you guys sent me, you know, I had to upload it to them. Um, I had to disclose, you know, the, uh, the pricing and what I was going to receive as far as merchandise and everything and what I had to do for y'all. Um, and we just have to disclose that. And if it's, if it's a red flag, you know, they'll flag it and tell us. Um, but all that stuff goes through the athletic department and everything. Um, so that's how they're kind of keeping that in touch. So do you have to wait back for approval or do you just have to do that and move forward unless they flag it? You know, I would love to have this conversation here in about, you know, six months because I feel like it's going to be different. But right now, I mean, everybody's just 
it's a go. So everybody's just <laughs> uploading it. It's pending. We're off. You know, that's, that's what we're doing. So until we're told otherwise or canceled, you know, that's what we're going to do. So. so let me ask you this. Do any of the other players at Clemson know about your deal? Oh, uh, I, I, my roommate does. Um, I've, I've uh, listened to you guys with him coming downstairs or whatever before. Um, and I actually had a couple of guys that work up there from Birmingham and they listened to the show and they heard, Hey, it's the Rick and Bubba guy. What's up, Trent? You know, so <laughs> it, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of known. And uh, before it's all said and done, I'll make it well known. So y'all don't worry it's about so, that. Have you had to, have you had a discussion with Dabo at, <laughs> at any point? I, I, I have not. I kind of um, just want to sure know what that, his, his initial take on it was. <laughs> I'm sure Coach Sweeney will find out about it at some point. Um, I'm sure he'll have no problem with it, um, you know, being a Pelham guy. Um, I'm sure <laughs> he's listening to the show a time or two, so uh, yeah. I'm sure he'll like it. So yeah. so w- are there are there other offensive linemen that have a deal that you know about? Uh, yes, sir. There's a few others that um, have some deals. You know, a lot of them are kind of doing their own apparel you know, and that's just kind of where they create their own brand and, you know, sell shirts or whatever. And then a couple of guys have had some deals with some, uh, some big name fast food chains, um, around, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how this impacts everything, uh, within the next year. Yeah. I want to ask you, Trent, and, and again, you can all, just disclose what you're comfortable with. Cause the last thing we want is yeah. to have your dad call us and coach Sweeney and say you're killing us, <laughs> but, but you can see it. You're there. Because you, I, you really already touched on some of it. I was just shocked how quickly the switch flipped on. And, oh, by the way, there's there's NIL deals. Uh, you can go do them. And people just start going nuts. But <laughs> that, when, they, when that stuff got passed, that door flipped wide open. And I was jumping on it. And, and I don't blame them. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. I've already signed a deal with you guys, you know, working on some other things. Um, if there's an opportunity to make money out there, you know, doing something that you enjoy, then why not, you know? Well, what? But so you've seen firsthand, and and you don't have to disclose the details that that you, some of your players that that maybe have gotten where you're going to go, and I do believe you will. Yep. Uh, to to prominent positions, uh, and they're 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 upperclassmen. There's people, you know, brands coming to them. They're not having any problem finding. The- There's actually a few of the guys that have agents, um, and and frankly, they need them. Um, for all the guys that are wanting to advertise their stuff, and uh, I, I know some guys right now that have some that have some six figure deals. Wow, um, with some coming, and it's like it's serious too. Um, so six so, figures, you're talking about a hundred grand, a hundred grand plus, yes, sir. And I know that sounds crazy, but that's I mean that it is what it is, um, you know. And and it doesn't surprise me a bit just being at Clemson and us having kind of the, you know, the media outlet that we have and the opportunities, it doesn't surprise me a bit. Well, I mean, you just, if you play the odds based on the last few years, you guys are going to be in the playoffs. And that's, you know, that's the marquee stage. So if you're one of the guys handling the ball, especially, you you would expect, uh, you know, a lot of uh, exposure at that. And, and we're going to see what the market says that's worth. But I, the six-figure deals we're hearing being thrown around, we, we had the one story of the kid at Tennessee State who's an incoming freshman got a $2 million deal. Now, we can't verify that yet, but that story was out there. That the craziest one of all to me is what they're doing at Miami because they're, yeah, the they're whole basically team. just yeah. splitting it all off and you know <laughs> sending it to everybody and all they got to do legally is just post a picture here or there about it and you know they can legally get that money. Um, and I, I just hope it doesn't turn into it, it's already such a business, and I just I just want the game to stay the same. You know the game that I fell in love with. I, I just want it to be like that. You know. I just, I just hope this whole thing doesn't turn into, you know, it turns into who can bid the most, you know, because now recruits are going to start asking, you know, well, who can you offer that's going to sponsor me when I get here? Um, and that's a legitimate question for some of these recruits. And it's just going to become a bidding contest, I really think. And I just really hope and pray it doesn't change the game for the worse. You, you know, well, on that, and I know we got to go to break, I've heard several of the athletic directors talk about it. And you know, the thought process is that maybe the big schools will get bigger, stronger. They got more money. But some of them are saying, no, actually, this may be a chance for us to peel off some of those top athletes that we had no hope of getting before. The so shoes. it may be more of an equalizer, but we'll have to see. All right, we'll come back. Stay with that, Trent. Trent Howard's our guest, offensive lineman from Clemson, and one of the uh, NIL Rick and Bubba deals uh, that we've cut here in the last few days. And we'll talk more about that when we come back on Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. 
All right, so Bubba, we're small business owners. You know, when somebody says small business, does it ever, does it ever hit you that includes us? Yeah, I know we are. We're yeah. right in the middle of that. That's we're, us, Rick. Yeah, that's and, us. And after last year, getting a little smaller. <laughs> yes, we <Yeah>. are. <laughs> uh, it's so, but HR can be a problem. It, it can kill you if if you're a small business uh, because it's hard to keep up with all the minimum wage requirements. Uh, uh, you got to terminate people. Uh, labor regulations. Do you really have time for that? And then if you bring somebody in full time, I mean, they aren't cheap. Uh, average salary, $70,000 a year. Uh, so why don't you contact Bambi, B-A-M-B-E-E. They were created specifically for small business. Uh, you can get a dedicated HR manager that crafts HR policy, maintains your compliance, all for just $99 a month. Now, that sounds doable, $99 a month. You, you can change HR from your biggest liability. Now it comes to your biggest strength. So the dedicated HR manager that we get, is available by phone, email, or real time chat. You got to bring people on. They make sure you do it right. You got to let people go. Sometimes that can be dicey. They handle that. They customize your policies to fit whatever business you have, and they help you manage your employees day by day for just $99 a month. There will be no hidden fees. You can cancel them at any time. So you're not locked into anything. So why don't you get a free HR audit today from our friends at Bambi? Uh, so just go to Bambi, B A M B E E dot com slash Rick Bubba right now to schedule your free HR audit. That's B-A-M-B-E-E dot com slash Rick Bubba. Talking to Trent Howard, we have a few more minutes with him. Trent has signed an NIL deal as a college football player at Clemson with the Rick and Bubba Show. He has one of his shirts on right now. Uh, He has his spatula on the way, or you already have it? I already have it. I have not yet gotten the chance to use it, but I have it. It okay. is ready to go. And you have the the mesh Rick and Bubba hat with the the Rick and Bubba logo on the front, and then yes, that's a very comfortable hat, isn't it? Yes, sir. I like it a lot, especially the mesh for the summertime. You know, it yeah. doesn't get too hot. I like it. So uh, you see what what's happening with college football. You said you are concerned that the game you love, uh, you know, could uh, could be tainted by this but if you can't beat them join them uh and you and you're working on on some deals too but but you're right it, this has to open up the door but bub i think you made a point what some people were saying this could be an equalizer it could and and Trent too i think there's a there's a i mean there's an enormous amount of money that goes into college football and because you guys as the players could not be paid directly that money has kind of backlogged on coaches salaries on facilities and the money spent on all that kind of stuff. And I think that that this may help to be kind of an equalizer in that. I don't – I hope it doesn't destroy football. But uh, I do think that – you know, we've talked about it for the 28 years we've been on the show, long before you were even born, Tramp, that that the athletes needed to be compensated more than they were. Now, I'm not saying big, fat paychecks for everybody, but – um, you know, you get your education. That certainly has a value to it. But with the money coming in, and the NCAA always said they wanted you guys to be student athletes, but they wouldn't let you act like student athletes. Right. That was the thing that was so strange. So I, I'm glad some of this has opened up. And really, I think it's just the tip of the iceberg. I, I, you know, if you look at the Supreme Court ruling, especially what Kavanaugh said in his, um, there they could be some more cases coming down. I don't know that it will get all the way to affect you before you graduate, but I think we're going to see more changes over the long haul. Trent, let me ask you a direct question on this. You, you, you play, you've played football a long time. Bubba and I played sports. Uh, you know, things are not always as chummy on a team as the fans would like it to be. Uh, people have animosity sometimes. And personalities. Personalities. Groups. Uh, yeah. c- you know, can clash. But, but in football, especially because it is the ultimate team sport, there you know a lot of things call themselves team sports, but football is the quintessential team sport because uh, everybody's got to work together. And a lot of times those differences can just be put aside. I played football alongside guys that I wouldn't want to hang out with, but when we were out there on the field, we were close, we got emotional, and we were we were we all had the same goal. Are you concerned at all? Let's say, for instance, you're an offensive lineman. Let's say a quarterback is getting all these endorsement deals in the NIL world. And Hundreds the, of thousands yeah, of dollars, and the offensive yeah. line just keeps being offered free barbecue. Okay, <laughs> and well, you know, for me as a big guy, you know, that's not necessarily a bad deal. You know, right. they're going to end up losing money if they're offering me free barbecue all the time. But, um, but you could but, see uh, where jealousy it, could get into it. Yes, sir. I mean, it is a legitimate concern, you know. Um, 
for me, I just think it goes back to what the Bible talks about as far as jealousy, you know, and, and having, you know, you see a guy that you're out there working out with every day, you're doing the same exact thing he's doing, but all of a sudden he's getting all this and, you know, you're not just because, you know, you play a different position. Um, I really feel like at Clemson, though, I think we're built for this because um, we really do have a good family atmosphere. Everybody on the team gets along great. You know, I think if anybody's going to withstand all of this, it's, it's going to be us uh, and be able, and there are going to be hard times, you know, with all this to work through it. And I think that we're, we've got a great foundation that we can build upon and just start adding this to it. You know what? You're listening to the coaches, aren't you, son? Uh, yeah, you're doing it right. But, but, you know, but here's something I'd like for you maybe to say. Don't make such a big deal out of that, uh, guys, because we also know this before any of this was available. We all know why the numbers are on the team jerseys in the team store. We know why they pick certain numbers over other numbers. We all know that, okay? I know you couldn't put the person's last name on it, but we all know it. So we've already kind of lived that out as football players anyway, right? I mean, we know the quarterback, is his jersey's going to be in the team store, his number on our team, not, not necessarily mine. We know the star running back is going to be on the poster for the preseason yeah. probably more than we are. So is that something that really won't be that big a deal? Because if you play football, different positions get different hype anyway. I really think if you've made it to this level, you know, that, that I'm at right now, I think you kind of already have the foundation built that, you know, hey, I'm an offensive lineman. That's the way it is. You know, quarterbacks going to get what they're going to get. You know, DBs are going to get, you know, all these guys are going to get what they're going to get. And we're going to be, you know, what, what we get. Um, so I really think that factors into it a lot because, I mean, even before all this NIL stuff started, you know, you walk into like a little on-campus store, you know, you're not going to see 75 in there, and rightfully so. I mean, you're going to see all the big names. You know, number 16 is going to be everywhere. Number 9 is going to be everywhere. Yep. Um, so I think that actually plays a good factor for us because people are kind of already used to this idea um, that, you know, the quarterbacks and all the other big-time, you know, positions are going to just receive more attention. That's just the way it is, and that's the way it always has been. Trent, I have an idea for you guys. I'm going to share it with you, and I, I – I mean, it's no secret, but I think the offensive line, and we've already seen this, I think, at Arkansas, you guys need to go in together. Go in together. And, and split it even and get a bigger deal. I think as a line, you could go in and get a better deal. We've kind of discussed that, and also one of the NIL things you can do is you can actually have your own camps. Right. Um, so we've thought about maybe the offensive line coming together next year in the summer and putting together a few camps for some guys who want to come learn some stuff. and. You know, that might be good for us as far as being able to teach our craft to other young kids that are inspired by us and that enjoy the game that we do too, but also a chance to, um, you know, make a little bit of money out of doing it. Let me tell you why that's a great idea. There is very few, if any, offensive line camps that even exist. <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I remember when everybody said, hey, Rick, come to a camp. And I'm like, they're throwing the football to each other. That's never going to happen in my life. Can, some, <laughs> can somebody teach me how to block? Can somebody exactly. teach me how to play? And and I know some people have even talked about that that needed to be done, but because there wasn't any, any way to really make money at it, uh, yes, th- nobody had really done it. And I think that if you know you do that, say our camp is for the your kid who obviously is going to have his hand in the dirt. We're here to teach him how to be a great offensive lineman, and he'll he'll be sought after uh, and at the college level. And let's tell you something: that quarterback may be getting a good endorsement deal right now, whatever. But when it comes time for an NFL team to, to go get some great offensive yeah. linemen, they, they ride a big check to offensive line. <laughs> That's right. They sure do. And I think the fun part for us is we wouldn't necessarily be in it for the money as far as doing the camp, but just to be out there and enjoy it. And we would be in charge. It would be ours to put on, ours yeah. to do the drills with. I think that would just be fun. So I, I, before we go with a minute on the clock, I think we all know why you picked 75. That's right. Um, so my dad was number 75. Um, I was actually 76 in high school. I remember not that. In, uh, in middle school, actually, because somebody else had 75. And then in high school, it became available for me. And it's just kind of – it's just what I've always been since then. So. Yeah, and you know I, pl- I wore 75 too. Your dad's probably See, mentioned it. R- Rick, uh, yes, Rick uh, this whole time thought you were doing it for him, <laughs> <I knew> Trent. <laughs> you know, in my mind, even though I knew your dad wore that number, <laughs> I thought, well, deep down, Trent's really doing it for me. 
Well, that's right. And there's some truth to that. You know, I'm trying to carry on the 75 and uh, improve upon what it was, you know, and start building the foundation for it. And, you know, maybe we'll all end up making some money off of number 75 one day. Well, we're, we're yeah. Trent, we, we yeah. love, Thank we you, love buddy. you guys and yep. your dad. He's, he's one of the funniest guys I know. And, uh, He'd make a great radio host one day, no doubt. I, I agree with that. <laughs> he, he, can, he can be a radio host long before we could ever be a great offensive lineman. <laughs> That's right. So, Absolutely. Uh, hey, Trent, thanks, buddy. And we're glad to have you on Team Rick and Bubba with the NIL contract. You just show that spatula to those people with those six-figure deals and say, I got this, a T-shirt, a hat, and a hundred bucks. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Trent, Thanks. congrats, and we hope you have many NIL deals and hopefully a pro contract right. to, to follow later on. Yeah. Trent Howard, offensive lineman at Clemson, uh, part of the Rick and Bubba NIL team. Thanks to all of you for joining us for this edition of Rick and Bubba University, the podcast. Mm-hmm.